Okay. Yes. Welcome okay. to the second lecture of uh, this last series on image processing applications of linear algebra in image processing. So I hand over this session to Dr. Gaurav Bhatnagar. Okay. Thank you, Dilpreet. Uh, so uh, uh, am I audible and my screen visible to all? Uh, yes, you are audible. Your uh, slides are also visible. Okay. Uh, so before I start today's lecture, let me have a, a quick question around if uh, um, uh, students might have in their mind whatever on whatever we have done in the last lecture. So if there are some queries, and if you want to ask, uh, I think uh, we can take five minutes and then try to clarify those. So that means if there are some questions in the chat box, please uh, let me know. Okay, so it seems that no uh, query are there from the student side. So let me start uh, the second lecture of, the, of this particular series where we are going to discuss the applications of linear algebra, uh, specifically in the English processing. Uh, so, uh, so before uh, we are going uh, going ahead, uh, this slide will summarize uh, the recap which we have done in the last lecture. So uh, we we started the last last lecture with the definition of the linear algebra, uh, where uh, where we, where we have uh, given the definition of the linear algebra and what is the meaning of this word linear algebra. Then uh, we have uh, we have seen a very quick connections of linear algebra in uh, different areas like uh, fin uh, finite geometry and the system of equations. Then we started the actual agenda of this uh, series when uh, we try to explore the connections of linear algebra and image processing. Uh, then we have seen uh, in the last lecture that uh, why uh, a digital image is always going to be a matrix and what, what, is the, what is the mathematical reasoning behind it. Then we have seen uh, uh, how, uh, how color image look like mathematically. Uh, when, uh, when we try to have a color image, then uh, we have seen the connections of linear algebra uh, with the colors uh, which we are going to have uh, around us and how uh, these colors will reflect in a uh, in an image uh, so in today's lecture we are going to uh, we are going to uh, discuss about uh, uh, one very versatile tool of linear algebra that is called the singular value decomposition which is uh, and, and this uh, tool of uh, singular value decomposition is not only very famous in mathematical community but also in the engineering community uh, due to its wide applicability in the uh, in, in in the applications uh, in the in, in the diverse uh, applications so we will uh, we will uh, we, uh, today we are going to discuss and the, and try to witness the importance of singular value decomposition uh, mathematically as well as uh, from the applications point of view as well uh, so, uh, so let us start the journey uh, of today's lecture, uh, basically uh, in, uh, uh, towards the goal to explore the single value decomposition. Okay, so uh, why single value decomposition is very famous in mathematical community and the uh, uh, application oriented disciplines. So, uh, when we try, when we try to explore the linear algebra, then there are few shortcomings of linear algebra or the techniques which we are going to have in uh, linear algebra. So, the first and the major drawback uh, which we usually face is uh, the with respect to the invertible matrices. So, a, more, a lot of techniques or tools or processes are going to be there for the square matrices. As well, as soon as we are going to have a you know, we are going to have a rectangular matrix, things actually uh, uh, changes, and then we are going to have very limited tools in our hand. For example, uh, let let me talk about the inverse of a matrix. So when we talk about the inverse of a matrix, we uh, the underlying assumption says that even matrix is going to be a square matrix uh, because uh, we can always find our determinant of a square matrix only. And if you are going to have a determinant of a matrix, then we are 
a able to identify whether it is singular non singular and we know that for every non singular matrix there exists the inverse so whenever the invertibility uh, comes for a given matrix the general perception says that uh, my underlying matrix is going to be square but what will happen if i am going to have a uh, have a rectangular matrix because in the real life problems when you try to model uh, any problem uh, through the linear algebra you no longer going to get a square matrix it is it is going to be very hard to digest that uh, digest this fact that most of the real phenomena will lead to a rectangular matrix rather than a square matrix and then we are going to have a very limited tools with respect to the rectangular matrices hence whatever we are learning in linear algebra with respect to this square matrices is not sufficient to provide the complete sight of that particular real phenomena so we are looking for something which is applicable for uh, uh, which is applicable for the rectangular matrices as well and it is going to be as robust as possible as we are going to have something uh, for the square matrices like uh, another example at this point of time which i want to take the eigen decomposition of a matrix of any matrix so eigen decomposition uh, i am i am meaning about the spectral decomposition of a matrix so there are different names for uh, this term eigen decomposition some books says eigen decomposition some books says spectral decomposition but the underlying idea is you are, you are able to if you are able to identify uh, the eigen values and eigen vectors of a matrix then uh, you can always write a particular matrix as uh, let's say uh, let's say q q transpose this is going to be a, a diagonal matrix including all the eigen values of this matrix a and this is going to be another uh, two, uh, two uh, one of the uh, matrix which actually have the eigen vectors with respect to all the eigen values in the columns in, in, in its column so this is this is nothing but the very simple example of eigen decomposition or the spectral decomposition but in this case as well when we talk about the eigen values and eigen vectors and these eigen values and eigen vectors are going to have a very vast application uh, in the different domains however everything boils down to the uh, so that is square nature of the matrix as long as the matrix is square i can always identify the eigen values and i can always identify the eigen vectors that that's a different story whether the all the eigen values are distinct or not whether it is diagonalizable or not but that that those are those are the different uh, questions which can be answered very easily but whenever we talk about the eigen values finding the eigen values and corresponding eigen vectors the matrix has to have square in nature if a is not a square matrix then we are not able to identify uh, identify uh, uh, you can see the eigen values of it now if we if you try to just observe the relationship between uh, relationship between this uh, linear algebra and image processing uh, i know that image processing every image is going to be a uh, every image is going every image is going to be uh, a matrix and uh, whenever uh, you try to take a, a, a photograph from your camera or mobile you are not going to have the square image you are going to have a rectangular photograph so the meaning is we are looking we are more interested in those tools which will help us to process the rectangular images rather than the square image because the uh, square images we are going to have sufficient number of tools so this is a singular value decomposition is one such tool which can handle the square cases as well as the rectangular cases the other thing is eigen decomposition is not unique everyone knows that uh, this eigen decomposition which we are going to have is not unique in the sense that uh, given given a particular eigen value lambda you are going to have the multiple eigen values let's say eigen vector if v is going to be the eigen vector then any multiple of v is also going to be the eigen vector of uh, of matrix a with respect to the eigen value lambda hence this v is not unique so q is not going to be unique So, but now we are looking for something which will try to give us something unique even for the rectangular images so uh, and then we are more interested in the invertible matrices uh, then unique decompositions then these are the two applications or the two scenario which comes from the mathematics point of view but from the image processing point of view we are going to have two other uh, uh, thing called the noise removal and the data compression so as this this lecture will progress we will be about to see these uh, uh, these particular applications as well
and the ultimate goal of this lecture series is to culminate the whole process with a very decent or the widely used technique called the principal component analysis which is actually based upon the singular value decomposition uh, and it will help us uh, to reduce the dimensionality of the curve so if you look at it for the simplest example i think you have some uh, in some lecture in the facebook or google so if i if i consider the facebook and if i i if i just want to know the data which is stored uh, in the facebook server now you can see the millions of users are there billions of users are there and those millions of users are going to have different connection with different people so if you if i want to summarize all those things uh, in in a form of data then that data is going to be huge and that is going to the curse of actually the curse of the data science but where the curse says the data is going to be highly dimensional so i am going to have the different dimensions to the data and these dimensions are going to create a lot of problem for me because uh, in order to process a uh, huge data i should have a very good computing facility if i don't have a good computing facility i cannot bring out a meaningful information out of that particular data so i cannot even in, in other words i cannot process that data with an ease so i am looking for some technique just to take care of uh, this thing that which can reduce the dimension of data without losing uh, without the information loss so i don't want to lose the inform uh, i don't want to lose the information however i just want uh, that data has to be compact in as small uh, in in any small component as small as possible so that the regular computing facility can process that particular data and this pc is going to be one such technique which will try to give uh, try to reduce the dimensionality of the data for the further processing uh, and this principal component analysis is purely based on there are different ways actually different ways to implement the principal component analysis but the most efficient way comes from the singular from the form of the singular value decomposition uh, so maybe in the next lecture we are about to discuss about the principal component analysis and how the things will uh, move uh, from svt to principal component analysis so this is the whole agenda of today's lecture and uh, a gist of the discussion which we are going to do uh, in the next lecture uh, in this particular lecture series So now let us start with this uh, versatile tool called the singular value decomposition in the linear algebra, and then uh, we will see that how things will go, uh, how things will move uh, with this particular singular value decomposition. So, in order to give you uh, a brief motivation why and how this particular point, which I have mentioned, data compression is actually required, or how this uh, high dimensionality is going to be a curse, let me give you a very simple example. Here. let me consider these two matrices a or let me say for the simplicity let me say this is going to be a matrix b so i am going to take the two different matrices the the size of this matrix is again going to be a 6 by 6 this is again going to be 6 by 6 now i want to store these matrices in the computer i know that uh, i can always save the all this data because when i collect data i need some resource to store that data and in order to store the data i i that the computer is going to be the or the hard drive or maybe cd or maybe uh pen drive whatever uh, uh, medium i have is going to be quite useful so i just want to store this data the meaning is when i when i try to store this 6 by 6 matrix essentially i am trying to store the 36 numerical values numerical value in this case this is going to be the integer so i can say that i just want to store the 32 integers uh integers into my uh storing device now the question is the space required to store this particular 36 integers is going to be little high uh is it possible that i want to store the same matrix in a very less amount of uh less less amount of uh, storage capacity when compared to the 36 integers so is there any way so can anyone tell me is there any way how to do uh, how to store the same matrix without storing the 36 values i just want to store maybe 10 values 8 values 5 values or maybe 6 values can anyone tell me how to proceed any intuitive idea
So whosoever, whosoever you want to uh, reply, please unmute yourself and uh, you can uh, reply or respond to my query. So I don't want the objective is I don't want to store the 36 values. I just want to store the uh, some number of values which are far less than the 36. And this concept is called the compression. When you just find, try to find a redundancy in your data and then uh, remove those uh, redundancy and whatever the essential components are, you are going to store those particular data. So anyone? Okay, so let me tell you very simplest uh, solution. So if you uh, store some of those. Okay, so Deva, Devanshu is asking, saying that uh, uh, we need to store the sum of rows. Uh, but, uh, but the storing the sum of rows will not suffice the requirement. Here, the, the case is very simple. Now, can, can you talk, can you apply that the same concept in the second matrix when the numbers are different? Here, the number is same, so you can certainly do that. But in general, that is not going to be a viable option because it may be possible that all the elements in a row are going to be distinct. And when that is the case, then summation is going to be very highly imposed problem when you are going to have the six variable and one given information. So using this one sum, you cannot uniquely identify these six values. So the, mean, the meaning is if you are taking the summation of the row, you are going to lose the information that at one place, what percentage of this sum will go, at the second place, what percentage of this sum will go, and so and so forth. So, of course, for this case, yes, uh, I can I can say uh, your option is viable for at least for this matrix only because all the values are same. But in the easiest solution is the factorization. If I am able to factorize this matrix into the tiny matrices such that after having the matrix arithmetic on those tiny matrices, I can always construct this bigger matrix A then I am able to store my big matrix in a very small manner and the requirement is going to be very less. Nice. So now let us see what will happen in this particular case. So I can write this matrix as the multiplication of two vectors. So this is going to be a column vector, this is going to be a row vector. Let's say this is going to be some uh, vector C and this is going to be some vector R. So whenever I multiply C with R, I am going to get the same matrix A which is given to me. And in order to store this matrix A, what I am looking at, I am looking at the, uh, the storage capacity to store 36 integers. However, in this case, I am just looking at the storage capacity for the 12 integers only. Integers only and then some space for storing that I am looking or the operation is going to be the multiplication of these two matrices. So if you are if you are going to follow any uniform policy that okay all the factorization is going to be multiplication of course all the factorization is going to be multiplication so this particular value or this particular information is again going to be redundant in nature and essentially you are going to have the 12 integers uh, storage capacity require uh, requirement to store this particular matrix A so I am going to store C and R and whenever I want to retrieve my matrix A I just multiply C with R and I am going I am done so. The factorization technique which we are going to have in linear algebra plays a very vital role to optimize the storage capacity for different data volumes which we are going to have with us. Now, so let us try to have a similar example in this particular matrix B as well. So now this is going to be a matrix and I just want to store this matrix. So now the, since the dimension is 36 by 6, so again I am looking for uh, the storage capital kept it over 36 symbols. Again, I cannot take integer because these are not integer. I don't know what are what kind of value is this. So I'm assuming that these are the characters. So I am just saying that I am looking for the sorry requirement for 36 symbols. So now again the motivation and objective is going to be same. The objective says instead of my voice is not uh, clear. No, it is good for me. Okay, voice. because I, I guess uh, there was someone is there who wrote that uh, voice is not clear. Probably the is from. Okay. Their side. Okay. I think you can uh, maybe check the speaker or something. I don't know. 
Okay. Okay, so there are a few uh, comments as well, so they are saying clear. So I think there is no problem, at least from my side. Okay, so now we are coming back to this example. Uh, again, the objective is to store this particular matrix, but not in the storage capacity of 36 cables. I just want to reduce it. So again, uh, the, the motivation says that if I somehow I can, uh, I can, I'm going to, uh, factorize this matrix in some tiny matrices such that the, after multiplication of those tiny matrices i'm going to get uh, i'm going i'm going to get uh, this matrix back then i am done and i'm going to store this matrix in that particular manner so let me see uh, that, that particular kind of factorization so again as i re, i rename this matrix as a as b so let me take this b so now if it uh, if you quickly look at uh, the pattern over here so this row is actually repeating in this particular matrix. So this matrix can be factorized in that these two uh, vectors, one is the column vector, the one is going to be the row vector, such that the multiplication of these two is going to give you uh, the matrix B. And again, the storage capacity for this, uh, these two uh, vectors are again going to be the 12 symbol. It's not, nothing but the requirement just to store the 12 symbol instead of 36 symbol. So when you have this kind of uh, phenomena, when you want to store the complete information in less, less, uh, less, uh, less uh, in, a, in a very less capacity, then this concept is called the data compression. And now data can be anything. Data can be the textual data, numerical data, or uh, you can say the audio data, video data, image uh, textual, or you can say the visual data, the like images. So now the nature of data is going to complicate the process or uh, maybe give you a very easy process. But the data compression means that you just want to reduce the storing capacity of a given data. And then data can be of any type. So you, uh, that, that is going to be there. So this is a very brief motivation uh, why the factorization techniques are actually very famous when you talk about this uh, signal processing, when you talk about uh, uh, image processing or you may or maybe you can talk about the video processing or in general the data processing where you are going to have the huge volume of data and you are going to do that but the only problem is is this factorization unique or not if it is not unique then you might face some problem uh, for certain kind of matrix when, uh, when the matrix is nice and clean then you can certainly go you, you can certainly uh, go ahead with the factorization technique but when it is not unique then there are few matrices which will uh, give you some trouble and then you are going to uh, um, you are going to use your wisdom to tackle those situations but the factorization techniques are the best tool for the compression uh, so now uh, motivating by this field, by this particular factor, we are going to have a lot of factorization technique. Let me name some of them right now in front of you. The one is the LU decomposition method, then you have the QR decomposition method, then we are going to have the spectral decomposition or the eigenvalue decomposition, and, and many more. These are going to be the, some, of the, uh, some, some of the factorization technique. So there are going to be some loophole in each and every technique. So the biggest loophole which I can uh, observe right now is uh, most of the most of the uh, most of the decomposition or the factorization technique will uh, are only for the uh, uh, trying uh, for the square matrices or if they are working for the rectangular matrix then they are not going to be unique. So in order to overcome these things or these uh, shortcomings or loopholes, we are going to have the one solution that is called the similar value so, uh, decomposition. And that is why the single value decomposition is going to, is going to have the diverse applications in diverse domains and uh, is going to be very unending story for a single value decomposition. You can go in any discipline, in any domain, you will definitely be able to find uh, the application of single value decomposition. The only thing is really you need to understand how the single value decomposition is going to be applicable in that particular domain. So now, now let us, uh, let, let me define uh, uh, the singular value decomposition for a given matrix A. So, as I mentioned, that SVD is one of the one of the most powerful tool uh, in linear algebra, and is going to be factorization and approximation technique. 
So the SVD is not going to work as a factorization method, but also as the approximation method, which effectively reduce any real or complex matrix to smaller and invertible matrix. So now these two words are very useful in terms of uh, in, in in terms of single value decomposition. So when you go back and try to have the uh, uh, try to have these factorization technique, so they they are going to give uh, some matrices to you. It may possible that some of these matrices is going to be a uh, specific property, but not all. Like for if you are decomposition, I know that Q is going to be the orthogonal matrix, and R is going to be the orthogonal matrix. That is going to be the philosophy behind the QR. But none of the thing is going to be ensured that all the matrices are going to be uh, are, are going to be invertible at all the time. Uh, for uh, regardless of the input, you are going to get that. So it may also possible that there are going to be some example where the QR uh, QR factorization uh, actually doesn't exist. So what will happen in those cases? So we are looking for a versatile tool which will definitely going to give me a factorization where a matrix which is, which may be a real or complex has to be factored into the smaller matrices and all those matrices whatever uh, the fact, uh, factor we are going to get are going to be the invertible. So all these smaller matrices are going to be the invertible matrix and this particular deadly combination will make SVD is a prominent tool in the diverse disciplines. So mathematically, if I look at the definition of single value decomposition, so this uh, decomposition is nothing but any matrix A can be decomposed uh, into the three different matrices U, sigma, and V, uh, where this is going to be a diagonal matrix and these two are going to be the orthogonal matrix. Orthogonal matrices. Uh, so, uh, whenever you have this such kind of uh, factorization, then this factorization is called uh, the single value decomposition. Now, uh, A may or may not be a square matrix. So, this definition is very generic and it is going to have uh, the implications on the sizes of these particular matrices. So, the, for the square matrices, R are going to be the square matrices when you are going to have rectangular matrices, then not R are going to be square matrices, some is going to be square, some is going to be rectangular. And that is how we are going to have the classification of the single value decomposition. Uh, so, this is part this particular uh, definition is the matrix definition of single value decomposition. And this particular side is going to give the vector definition or the vector representation of SVD. So now let us have a very quick discussion of the sizes of this uh, U, sigma, and V, and what are the meaning of this particular uh, this particular value. Uh, so as I mentioned that for any matrix A, I am going to get a three matrix U, sigma, and V. And of course, the, when I have the V, I will get the V transpose. So this U is called the left singular vector, singular vector of matrix A. So this U is going to be a left wing singular matter because it is going to be operated on the left side, leftmost side. So that is why it is going to be left singular vector. This sigma is again going to be the singular uh, or the matrix of singular values. Singular values of A. On the other hand, this V is going to be the right singular vector. Right similar vector of A. So now the let us see the composition of the U sigma and V. This is going to be a diagonal matrix. This is going to be a diagonal matrix where all the similar values of matrix A are listed in the leading diagonal in the decreasing fashion. So the meaning is the first similar vector. If I say this is going to be sigma one, this is going to be sigma two, then sigma three up to sigma n. Then these all sigmas are going to follow the certain rule. We say that sigma one is always greater than equal to sigma two, is always greater than equal to sigma three, is always greater than equal to sigma four, and so on up to sigma n. So the first eigen of our first singular value of the matrix A is going to have the maximum value, and as you go further, you are going to have this value is going to be reduced, and uh, this the value of sigma is always or less than equal to sigma one and so on. Uh, so, so this is this is going to be uh, the one of the property which uh, the singular uh, uh, this diagonal matrix or the matrix of the singular values is going to be have. 
Now U and V are two special matrices which are going to be orthogonal in nature. So U is again going to be orthogonal matrix. So it is orthogonal. Orthogonal matrix. Whenever the A is real. Of course, whenever A is real, then it's going to be orthogonal. And whenever A is complex, then what is the uh, respective counterpart in the real domain? Oh, sorry, complex domain. So what is the actual counterpart of uh, orthogonal matrix in the complex domain? Anyone? I hope that you know you know about the orthogonal matrix. So a matrix is called orthogonal when it follows the same thing. Uh, the relation u u transpose is equal to y is equal to u transpose. I hope you uh, you know this definition of the orthogonal matrix. So if this is the definition of the orthogonal matrix, and orthogonal matrix is going to be a real matrix, then what will happen if the matrix is going to be complex? So in that in that case, in, uh, instead of taking just the complex this transpose, we have to take the conjugate as well and that kind of matrix is called the unitary matrix yes exactly so the one has given the right answer they said going to be unitary matrix so this u is going to be the orthogonal matrix if a is real and is going to be the unitary matrix if a is complex again uh, if you, for unitary matrix i am going to have the relation of u u theta is equal to i is equal to u theta u. So there theta is nothing but the conjugate transpose of the matrix i u. Okay, so now I'm, I will not go in a very complex manner since the images are going to be the real uh, matrices. So let us uh, work with the orthogonal matrix. However, this can be extended very easily for the complex domain as well. So now what is the what is so beautiful about this particular relation, whatever you are going to have? So this particular relation will ensure that your matrix is going to be invertible. Because uh, if you take this particular relation u u transpose is equal to y, this essentially says that u inverse is nothing but u transpose. So whenever you are going to have an orthogonal matrix with u, then that matrix is always going to be the invertible. And hence the part which I mentioned in the previous slide that it is going to have the factor, factorization, the small matrices, which are invertible. So due to this orthogonality of this particular matrix, the inverse of this u is always going to exist and hence u is always going to be invertible and the inverse or finding inverse is very easy. You just take the transpose of u, you will get the inverse. So no, you no need to do the long calculation of finding out the adjoints and then you have to solve the whole process and then try to find out inverse or you can even apply this Gaussian elimination or Jacobi manner to find out the inverse. So no need to go uh, for those particular uh, mechanism, you just take the transpose you are, and you are done, you, are, you have the inverse of u. The same observation can be given for the matrix V. V is again going to be the orthogonal matrix whenever A is real and it is going to be unitary matrix whenever A is complex. And again, uh, since it is an orthogonal matrix, uh, then of course it is again going to form the relation V V transpose is equal to I is equal to V transpose V. And this is essentially says that V inverse is going to be uh, V transpose. So the, uh, the matrix V and V are going to be, uh, are going, are going to be um, invertible as well as orthogonal. And the sigma is going to be a diagonal matrix having all the Eigen or the signal values uh, on the leading diagonal. So now let us try to understand what will happen with the sizes of this particular matrices when A is going to be a square matrix or A is going to be a rectangular matrix. So now let me let me uh, let me uh, pictorially uh, represent uh, the signal value decomposition and what is going to happen with this particular uh, scenario. So let's say the, the dimension of A is going to be n cross D. Then this factorization is going to give me uh, a matrix U, which is going to have the size of n cross N, sigma, which is going to have the size of n cross D, and a matrix V, which is going to have the size of D cross uh, D. 
so now you can uh, you can now look at uh, since these are the factorization of this matrix a then the multiplication of these three component will give you your matrix a pair then you have to ensure that the dimension of u sigma and v are such that the matrix multiplication is going to be ensured so in this particular case the the, the multiplication is going to be ensured how what is the problem now the problem says is i mentioned in the previous slide that sigma is going to be a diagonal matrix how about diagonal matrices are always going to be square that's what we know about the mathematics that all the diagonal matrices are going to be square matrices but here what i am getting i am getting n cross d matrix so these kind of matrix where at some point or at some location you are going to have um going to have a diagonal matrix and after that you are going to have some zeros then those kind of matrices are called the rectangular diagonal matrix so this sigma is actually a rectangular diagonal matrix rectangular diagonal matrix the meaning of rectangular diagonal matrix is you are going to have a matrix and up to a certain time let's say r you are going to have perfect diagonal matrix all these elements are zero all these elements are zero and after this r this is going to be all element is zero and this r is nothing but the rank of a matrix rank of matrix a so whatever the rank is there for this matrix a that up to that particular part r i am going to have a perfect diagonal matrix and after that rest of the elements are going to be zero so let me assume the rank of a or the rank of a is going to be r then in this rectangular diagonal matrix up to r in both the directions i am going to have a perfect diagonal matrix and rest of the elements are going to be so these are all 0 0 0 and 0 similarly since i have taken the rank r then the similar kind of things i am going to have in the u and v as well so in the u again i am going to take always a component because whenever i say r cross r so i can always delete this zeros then this will become r cross r in order to make the compatibility of the rank with the rest of the multiplication this is now going to become n cross r so the meaning is after the rank r whatever rows or vectors i am going to have that are not that much important for this particular matrix and we can certainly remove those uh, vectors to further reduce our matrices so or to, or to make our matrix smaller in nature the similarly if i want to take again the this multiplication compatible then this matrix is going to be r cross d and hence my v matrix is going to be d cross r so r so the meaning is after this whatever i am going to have over here all the vectors or all the rows i can delete that to get a uh, to get a very small matrix uh, into the picture so now these two scenario will give you two type of similar value decomposition so first first uh, first set of sizes is is where you are going to get the maximum size of all the factor because this is the maximum size i can have in this factorization for you this is the maximum size i am going to have uh, for the sigma and this is going to be the maximum size for the v so the meaning is whenever you are going in this direction when when you are u and v are square matrices of different size of course and sigma is going to be a rectangular diagonal matrix that as we did is called the full sv full singular value decomposition so this particular word suffices that the dimension of my factored matrices or factored matrices are of maximum size i cannot go beyond the size which i am going to have in the full sv however when you have this full sv kind of scenario again you are increasing the computing power or the storage capacity for the factorizations or for this matrix because i know that in this particular matrix all the elements almost all the elements are going to be zero so no need to store all the zeros element it may also possible that instead of storing this big matrix i will just store a vector having all the non zero singular values over here so then the scientist thinks of mathematical theory thought of okay the whole 
purpose of the factorization is to reduce the computing load as well as the uh, storage requirement. But that is that these two uh, purposes are not solved, are not served by this particular factorization. So full SVD is going to have very limited uh, uses in diverse applications. However, if you go in the second direction, when you are going to say that, okay, I am okay if my UNB are rectangular in nature, but I want my sigma as a perfect diagonal matrix, then you are going to get the reduced SVD. Then you will get the reduced SVD. And this reduced SVD is going to have numerous application in diverse application because this reduced SVD is going to serve both the purpose. The first thing is uh, you, are, you are going to have the less computational load and plus you are going to have the less uh, storage capacity. Of course, we can further exploit the, uh, uh, the pattern or the structure of U and V uh, into the taking into the account for the, for further this reducing the uh, uh, this storage requirement of this particular matrix that we can do. But right now I am not getting into it uh, because that's going to be a very far different direction uh, or the orientation for the single value function. Right now I am going to stick myself uh, with the full SVD and the reduced SVD. So using these dimensions of these particular factored matrix. I am going to have the full SVD or the reduced SVD. So reduced SVD will exploit one more property of matrix that is called the rank. So R is nothing but going to be rank of A. So this particular thing will again give you a very, a very nice relationship between the linear algebra uh, and this single value decomposition. It says that if you if you have the singular value decomposition of a matrix, you no, no need to find out the rank. You just look at what are the non-zero eigenvalues of or the singular values of uh, this matrix A, which are listed in this matrix, and that is nothing but the rank of your matrix. So SVD will give you a very nice formula for the rank. So rank of any matrix, rank of any matrix is nothing but the number of non zeros non zeros singular value so this is again going to give you a very nice uh, way to find out the rank of a particular matrix so this is how this uh, uh, this singular value decomposition is not only very valuable for the mathematical community but also for the uh, different uh, disciplines when it is going to find diverse application so now let us uh, let us uh, continue our further discussion. How to actually identify this factorization? Because uh, it is very easy to say, okay, you have to find out three different matrices U, sigma, and V, such that U and V are orthogonal. Sigma is a sigma is going to be diagonal matrix. But actually, how to identify these particular matrices? So now let us try to understand what is the algorithm, what is the process by which we can observe the singular value decomposition. Okay. So, but before getting into it, let me give you a very simple uh, geometric interpretation what is actually happening with this factorization. So, uh, I know that if A is going to be a matrix, it has to be factored in U as we transpose. Oh, fair enough. So, it is going to, uh, so I will assume that the singular value decomposition exists for this A and I am done with the representative geometrically. Now, whenever you try to represent any factorization method geometrically, you are just looking for uh, the system AX is equal to B. Given a matrix A, and if you multiply this matrix by another vector X, then it is going to modify this into another vector Y. Then how this X is changing into another vector Y, we actually give you uh, the, rep the geometrical representation of uh, and uh, any of the factorization techniques. Okay, so let, let us continue our discussion. So, uh, the deviation of x from y will essentially give the geometrical interpretation for any of the matrix. So, this is the underlying phenomena when you try to find out uh, uh, the geometrical interpretation of any of the factorization technique. So, now what is uh, what is happening with this single value decomposition? 
you and we are orthogonal in nature as i mentioned in the previous slide so now can you give me one orthogonal matrix which you are going to use a lot of times any matrix which you have used a lot of times any orthogonal matrix please do not give me the identity matrix i am not uh, uh, actually interested in that any matrix maybe the off size 2 by 2 off size 4 by whatever its size maybe which orthogonal matrix you are actually using right away from your level class when the geometry introduced to you i think in the last lecture uh, we have we have seen that uh, matrix so anyone is going to give the mind guess to it as uh, per its uh, cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta okay what is the name of that matrix rotation matrix. Uh, rotation yes. matrix hmm. yeah rotation matrix so this is the simplest example of orthogonal matrix which you are using right away from your level the uh, standard and this rotation matrix is not leaving you at all wherever you go if the geometry is there the rotation matrix will be so what is the what is the what 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 is going to be the pro main property of this it actually uses to rotate things maybe vectors maybe shapes maybe object whatever it may but rotation it is going to give you the rota rotation of the axis so now when i say the u and v these are the orthogonal matrix so these are going to be the some kind of rotation matrix so the effect of u and v in this particular transformation from x to y is nothing but rotation so now let us let me take this any two unit vectors so this v1 and v2 are the two general unit vectors uh, then if i am just going to take uh, like uh, it is nothing but a x is equal to u s v transpose x so now i am just following this particular path let me take this because this is a matrix this is a vector you are going to get some other vector so if i take any vector v2 and apply over here in say in place of x then the output of v transpose v2 is nothing but a rotated version of it so let me take after the rotation i am going to get this e2 so this particular multiplication of v transpose with any vector is going to be a rotation is going to be a rotation similarly if i take another vector v1 and then uh, just plug in this vector v1 in the place of x then the v transpose v1 is going to be a rotated version of that is going to be e2 so whatever the angle is going to be there uh, in between these two uh, vectors the same angle you are going to get over here after the rotation so the, this the multiplication of v transpose is going to have a rotation so let me say this is going to be some x1 so now i am looking at s multiply with s1 s is again going to be matrix s1 is going to be vector so you are going to get another vector let's say x2 now what is what will happen with this x2 so s is going to be uh, a simple diagonal matrix where you are going to have all the elements in diagonal but you don't have anything outside so now i will go back to geometry and when you are try to have the scaling of vector or scaling of objects what is there the, the scaling is nothing but you are done by the matrix sx sy where all elements are given in a two dimensional space so this is nothing but the scaling with respect to x direction is scaling with respect to y direction so whenever you are going to have a diagonal matrix diagonal matrix will always due to the scaling so whenever you have uh, these two vector e1 and when this sorry new vector e2 is multiplied with sigma then cos uh, with the corresponding value of sigma it is going to be stretched or the scaled so let's say it is going to be scaled in this particular manner now you are going to have this new vector with you in the similar manner you are going to have uh, another uh, sigma value sigma 1 is going to be in this particular manner now if you recall the previous discussion it says that all the entries in s are in decreasing fashion so jo sabse pehla singular value hoga that will lead to the maximum displacement or maximum scaling and as long as you are going with the nth singular value that scaling is going to be reduced and reduced and then uh, at the end of the time you are going to get the same uh, same vector which you are going to have before the application of sigma 
so that is why this now this unit circle is somehow become a ellipse so this this particular domain of circle is now converted into a ellipse and this is nothing but the scaling effect which is going to be there due to this sigma so this is nothing but scaling now if you take this vector again because now you are going to this is nothing but my x2 and if i apply this x2 on u i will get another vector and that is going to be my ultimate goal to achieve this y and then again what you will do this this is u is going to be a orthogonal matrix then there is going to be a rotation into the picture so this is now going to be rotated either in this way or that way so without loss of generality since we have the abstract things with me i am saying that the rotation is in the positive uh, direction so i am going to take this particular rotation so this uh, new position of sigma to uh, e2 is going to be this particular value after the multiplying with the vector u or this matrix u so this is this again going to be rotation so the svd is nothing but the combination of two rotations and one scale so this is nothing but the vertical interpretation of uh, the single vertical decomposition so whenever you try to uh, form a new vector y from this x with respect to matrix a and singular value decomposition then everything is going to follow a regular path of rotation plus scaling plus rotation so these are the very basic uh, very basic operations which we are which we are having from our early days of educa mathematical education and these particular operations are going to give us a new versatile tool uh, called the singular value decomposition. So the effect of singular value decomposition is always going to be the rotation scale and rotation. And what uh, what is the uh, angle of rotation here? What is the uh, measure of uh, measure of uh, what you say um, uh, scaling in this particular part? And what is the angle of uh, rotation over here? Is purely going to be decided by the matrices V transpose sigma and U. So the rotation can be in any direction, and the scaling is also going to be uh, with any magnitude. But again, the singular values are responsible for the scaling, and singular vectors are responsible for the rotation. So this is a very simple, uh, what you say, the interpretation of the singular value decomposition, geometric interpretation of singular value decomposition. So let me take five minutes now. Uh, do you have any query so far? So otherwise, we will uh, proceed further and see the algorithm to find out the singular value. So, anyone, any question or any query? Uh, sir, what is the rate part in this in the EU matrix in, in your previous what slide? Is what is the uh, rate part? In the you should uh, in the sigma matrix that okay. is the r cross r square matrix yes uh, what is the rate part in this u matrix in cross r uh, you are talking about this uh, uh, blue region basically uh, yes uh, yes this this is, is it whole zero no no it's not zero it's non zero entries but these are the non-zero entries created by zeros of sigma. So whenever you multiply this with zeros, essentially you are going to get output as zero. So these are the redundancies which we are going to have in U. Okay. Try to understand when you multiply this thing over here, what will happen? At the essence or essential contribution of the multiplication of these components with these zeros over here in this uh, blue region, ultimately is nothing but the adding zeros in the non-zero values in the multiplication. So okay. the value is essentially not going to change. That is why we can remove this, but these are not zeros. These are the non-zeros entries. Maybe positive, okay. maybe negative, whatever it may be. Okay? okay. But when you, when you multiply these three matrices, the essential effect or the final effect is going to be uh, nullified. Yeah. Okay. So any other query or uh, let me proceed further with the algorithm of finding uh, SVD.
it seems there is no query, so let me proceed. Okay, so now let us uh, have an idea, intuitive idea, how this single value decomposition is going to be obtained. And then there is going to be a very nice theory of it, and let me ex try to explain that uh, to you. So I'll got them to find that, actually, I think I have missed one. So anyways, once a matrix A is given to you, what will happen? As long as a matrix A is given to you, when is going to be a square matrix A is going to be a rectangle, it doesn't matter. You have, you are going to have two information in your hand. A and A. Okay. Given A, you can always find out A transpose. So the meaning is, if I give you A, essentially I am giving you two information, A and A transpose. So let me take very simple example of a matrix A of size n cross D and in that particular case, I am going to have a matrix n cross D and I am going to have a matrix A transpose D cross N. Now if you uh, clearly look at these two matrices, these are compatible with respect to matrix multiplication. So I can multiply A with A transpose and A transpose with A. So given A, I am having the two matrices A and A transpose, then essentially I can always find out two matrices A, A transpose and A transpose A. The size of uh, the matrix A, A transpose A, A transpose is going to be N cross N. And the size of this matrix is going to be D cross D. So, doesn't matter whether your A is a square matrix or a rectangular matrix, the matrix A, A transpose and A transpose A are going to be square matrices. Other thing, for, for the moment, let me say my D is equal to N. So, I am just talking about the square matrix. Whenever I am going to have a square matrix, then again I am going to have two square matrices, but now of the same size. The underlying idea says, regardless of the nature of A, I am going to have two different square matrices and now I can do what, uh, anything with, uh, on these two matrices which I can do for any other matrix. So now let us go ahead with the A, A transpose. So A transpose is going to be a square matrix and whenever you take the A, A transpose, the beauty of these matrices is always going to be a symmetric matrix. So now uh, let me take a very simple example. Let's say my matrix A is going to be 1 and 2. So and then A transpose is, is what? A column vector 1, 2. Now let me take A, A transpose is going to be 1, 2 multiply by 1, 2. So what you will get? You will get a 1 cross 1 element over here because the size is 1 cross 2 and 2 cross 1. And uh, a matrix of dimension 1 is always going to be symmetric. So now let me try to take the A transpose. So you can find out this value. I'm not uh, going getting into the multiplication of that. Whenever I take A transpose A, I am going to get 1, 2 and 1, 2. So this is going to be 2 cross 1. This is 1 cross 2. The output is going to be 2 cross 2. So can anyone quickly give me the values? I think this is going to be a matrix. Right. So now you can see what kind of matrix is this. This is always going to be the symmetric matrix. So doesn't matter what kind of matrix is a is a real matrix, is a complex matrix, is a square matrix, is a rectangular matrix. But when you try to find out A transpose A or A transpose, then depending on this N and D, you are going to get a symmetric matrix. And symmetric matrix is always going to be a square matrix. And uh, one of the major pro main property which we are going to have for symmetric matrix is all the eigenvalues are going to be. Kya hota hai property? Symmetric values ke eigenvalues ka are going to be real in nature. Yeah. If I impose another condition that is going to be positive definite, then that is going eigenvalues are going to be positive. So that's a uh, difference. But right now, this A trans A, A transpose and A transpose A are going to be uh, the symmetric matrices or square matrices. So I can either I can immediately identify the eigenvalue decomposition as a yes or the spectral decomposition to it. So this can be written as 
let's say uh, q and now i am going to i am going to take uh, this as the let's say uh, lambda uh, not lambda let me take the matrix sigma 1 and q transpose so this is nothing but the collection of all the eigen values of a transpose a a transpose and these are nothing but the collection of the corresponding eigen vectors in the similar manner when you take a transpose a again uh, you are going to have some uh, decomposition for it uh, eigen decomposition for it because it's going to be symmetric matrix and again i'm going to have uh, let's say r sigma 2 r transpose so now these matrices which we are going to have is going to give me the similar value decomposition can anyone tell me what is the relationship between the sigma 1 and sorry is gamma 1 and gamma 2 so what about the eigen values of a a transpose a transpose a so uh, the eigen values are of these two matrices are going to be same so let me have a very quick proof for this the eigen values of a, a transpose and a transpose a is going to be same so let me say that lambda v b a eigen pair eigen pair of a a transpose so the meaning if this is the eigen pair then uh, then by the definition of uh, uh, eigen values and eigen vectors i can always say that a a transpose v is nothing but lambda v this is the basic definition which we know now you can what you can do is now uh, i need to just uh, convert it into the a transpose a so just multiply a transpose on the both side then you will get a transpose a a transpose v is equal to a transpose lambda v then i this combination i am looking at and this is the multiplication of a matrix with a vector so let's say this is going to be some u and you are going to get the a transpose a u is equal to again look at it this is a scalar this is a matrix so i can uh, interchange their position so i am going to get the lambda and this is this essentially shows that this essentially shows that uh, lambda u is the eigen pair of a transpose a. So now by this particular simple result will tell me that uh, sorry, gamma one is equal to gamma. Two. So these two matrices are same. Regardless, I am having the AA transpose and A transpose A, and this is nothing but the singular values or SVs of A. So, again, this is not the exactly the SV values, we will see with the different Y. So, this will lead to the singular values of the matrix A. This particular thing will lead to V. So, Q is nothing but V, R is nothing but U. Uh, so, uh, then the singular value decomposition of a is nothing but is nothing but uh, going to be u which is nothing but r then we are going to have uh, this sigma two so this is going to be the square root of gamma if i say this is going to be gamma one is gamma one is equal to some gamma and v transpose so can anyone explain me why this is going to be square root over here and this is nothing but your singular value after looking at this analysis, can anyone tell me? So these are the, these lambda are going to be the eigen values of A transpose A. Then how it will become the singular values of A? Can anyone tell me that? Just look at the given matrix. Anyone? What is the meaning of uh, eigen value of A transpose A? So in this, the contribution of A is going to be twice. Double over, over here. Since this is a multiplication, then the, that contribution is again going to be squared. And hence, in order to find out the singular values of matrix A, you have to take the square root. So let me let me give you a very simple homework for you. You just think over it. Why the singular value sigma is going to be the square root of this matrix gamma, uh, which we are going to get the eigen values of either A, A transpose or A transpose A. And uh, if you are not able to identify this, uh, the answer, we will discuss in the 
play uh, tomorrow's lecture. So let me take this as a very simple example for you. So hence the SVD is going to obtain for a particular matrix that has to put the path of this A, A transpose and A transpose A. So now we are going to have the enough ingredient which is going to define uh, which is going to define the algorithm for the simple value decomposition. The only thing which you need to understand is one matrix is n cross and other matrix is d cross d. In case of square, you can uh, start with any of the matrix because you need to identify the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this particular matrix of this particular matrix. You can do that. But however, in this particular case, when the uh, when the matrix is rectangular, if n is uh, n is greater than d, then uh, the meaning is if you are trying to take this particular matrix, then you are going to have uh, you have to do a lot of effort in order to find out n eigenvalues. However, if you take this matrix, it is going to it is going to have uh, the same. Uh, you need to have the less effort in order to finding out the eigenvalues because the matrix the dimension is d by d. So can anyone tell me how is it possible? Here I am going to get the n eigenvalues and here I am going to get the d eigenvalues and I am saying n is greater than d. Then what will happen to n minus d? So the meaning is. The first D components are non-zero and rest of the elements are going to be zero. And hence, here this matrix is going to be singular, singular symmetric matrix. But this matrix is not going to be singular if D is going to be less than N. If N is going to be less than N, then this is singular or this is not going to be singular. Because this, the validity of this relation will make the rest of the singular values as zero. When uh, after uh, beyond the rank of this particular matrix or whatever the value is lesser is going to be there, and hence uh, you are going to have the combination of the so in order to find out non-zero eigenvalues of any of these particular matrix, you will always choose a matrix having the less dimension, and that is going to be the first step of the algorithm. So let me uh, let me give you a very uh, algorithm, uh, not example. I think I am missing one slide. Yes, someone is saying something. Yes, sir, I have. Sir, please go to the last slide. Okay. Sir, uh, to show a a transpose and a transpose a have the same eigenvalue, can we use the concept that a and a transpose has the same eigenvalues? Because of a a transpose. Yes, you can use, you can use. If that is applicable, suddenly you can use. Thank you, sir. But that I think that result is not actually uh, applicable here. Just look at it. But if it is applicable, you can use that. So I am not getting into the discussion why it is not applicable. You just take the transpose of any of the matrix. You can you will you come to know what you what actually you are doing. If it is applicable, then definitely you can use it. Otherwise, this is going to be the very simplest proof of the same. Okay, so the algorithm, the first step is going to be the very first step for me is going to be construct either A A transpose or A transpose A. So again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, whose dimension is less, just choose that so that you are going to have the less computation in order to find out the either. Values or the singular values of the matrix. So the first my first statement the step says construct either A A transpose or A transpose A, uh, and then the second step is going to be find the eigenvalues and eigenvector. Find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the chosen matrix. If you chosen A A transpose, then for A A transpose. If you chosen A A transpose A, then for that. Or A transpose A. The third is construct the singular value matrix sigma from the eigen vectors which you are going to receive from the previous step. So whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, eigen vectors you are going to get, uh, sorry, uh, eigen values you are going to get from this particular step, construct the sigma. Fourth, construct 
u or v from the uh, sorry i did a mistake so this is going to be the eigen values and this is going to be the eigen vectors so when you will get u when you will get v so it depends on when you are going to have the a transpose a or a transpose generally a transpose will lead to v and a transpose a will lead to u so if you have chosen in the first step a a transpose then ultimately you will get the sigma and v and if you have chosen a transpose a you have uh, essentially get the sigma and u so as long as you are going to have this the fifth step says use relation a is equal to u uh, u sigma v transpose to obtain the missing matrix so if you have obtained u in the previous step as long as as soon as you will get the u then a is known u is known sigma is known then using this relation you can always find out the matrix and if you have v over here then a is known sigma is known v transpose is known you can again use this particular relationship to get the uh, to get this particular uh, matrix u so this is the very simplest algorithm which you are going to have uh, for finding out the s value the the only issue with this algorithm is now you have to be very cautious when you try to find out the full SVD and when you try to find out the reduced SVD. But as I mentioned that we are more concerned about the reduced SVD. So I am not doing uh, uh, the extension of this algorithm for the full SVD. I am just talking about uh, the reduced SVD. So basically this is the algorithm for finding the reduced SVD. So there is, a, uh, there is one more step six when you try to have the full SVD, but there, since there is, there is going to be uh, the little uh, applicability of that particular scenario, so I am not going into that. So let us stick to the reduced SVD. So whenever you are going to have the reduced SVD, then this is going to be the algorithm and if you follow this particular path, then you are going to have the SVD of uh, a matrix. So I think I have sufficient time to do one example. So let me try to do one example where we try to find out uh, the uh, SVD of a given matrix. Uh, so I think uh, yes, I am going to have one uh, blank slide with me. So let me let me uh, take one example. So the example says find the SVD of uh, or the reduced SVD of matrix A, which is nothing but one two one. So this matrix, uh, is it uh, visible that it is going to be a singular matrix uh, and uh, we are looking for uh, the CSVD of this particular matrix to uh, obtain. So as soon, as soon as A is given to you, you will immediately find out A, A transpose and A transpose A. So A transpose is again going to be a two-way matrix, A transpose A is going to be a two-way matrix because I am going to have a square matrix with me. So if you are going to have the rectangular matrix, then you are going to have the different dimensions. So in this particular case, I can choose any one of it. So let me choose uh, first step. Let me choose A transpose A. So the A transpose A is nothing but multiplication of these two matrices. And let me quickly uh, write down the matrix to 4, 4, 8. So is it correct? Can anyone uh, check it? If I say do the A transpose A, should I get the same uh, matrix with the, which I am getting over here? Yes, sir, it's correct. Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so now this is my first step. It says that you have to find out A transpose A. What is the second step? Second step says you have to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So you can immediately find out the, um, the characteristic equation of it and then you have to solve it to get the final thing. And I'm hoping that you are aware how to find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let me give you the values uh, directly to you. So since this is going to be two by two matrix, so then they are going to be the two eigenvalues and corresponding to eigenvectors. So let me say lambda one. If the first eigen, uh, eigenvalue is going to be zero, and the corresponding uh, eigenvector for this is going to be 
minus 2 by root 5 and 1 by root 5. So this is the one first eigenvalue. Then I'm going to take the second eigenvalue. Uh, that is going to be a lam uh, lambda t is going to be 10. And the corresponding eigenvector is going to be 1 by root 5 and then 2 by root 5. So whenever you try to find out these eigenvectors, please make sure that you are going to take the uh, normalized vector as the eigenvector. So now if you look, if you find are able to find out the length of this particular vector is going to be one and this is again going to be one. So if you are getting a eigenvector with respect to any of the eigenvalues uh, which are uh, uh, which are not normalized, please normalize it. Maybe we can write that thing over here that uh, we have to find out the eigenvalues and the normalized eigenvector. So now we have to find out all the eigenvalues and the corresponding normalized eigenvector. If in the process you are getting normalized eigenvector, it's okay. If you are not getting the normalized eigenvector, please normalize it by dividing the length of those vectors to get the uh, normalized eigenvectors. So, uh, so these are the normalized eigenvectors which I have uh, which I have uh, uh, obtained with respect to lambda one is equal to zero and lambda two is equal to ten. So, as soon as you are going to have this second step done, so again, uh, please verify this homework. So, teacher is. Uh, is the person who always give homework to the students. That's the philosophy which we have in the elementary school. So now I'm also giving the homework to you. So I hope that uh, you will do this homework uh, just to just for the better understanding of the single value decomposition. Okay, anyways, so what is the third step which we are going to have? The third step says that first we have to construct the singular values and the singular values is nothing but the square root of these eigenvalues. The sigma is nothing but a two by two diagonal matrix where we are going to have the square root of these values. So this is going to be my sigma for this particular uh, for this particular problem. So as long as I am going to have uh, this particular sigma, what we are going to have now? So you have taken the a transpose. A, so a transpose will lead to u. So the fourth step says the matrix u is nothing but the collection of the eigenvector with respect to eigenvalues. Since I have taken this root 10, the bigger one first, because I have to arrange these uh, singular values in a decreasing fashion. So now the first vector I'm going to take with respect to the bigger singular values, and that is going to be this particular vector. So I will get 1 by root 5, 2 by root 5. In the same, since the second uh, similar value is going to be zero, so now the eigenvector with respect to uh, the corresponding eigenvalue will come. So this is going to be minus two by root five and one by root five. So this is going to be my u. So this is my fourth and then a five step says that if as long as you are going to have sigma and either u or v, just exploit the relationship, which is nothing but a is equal to u sigma v transpose to get. Uh, to get your um, what you say to, uh, to get your the remaining matrix v so now there are two ways now either you can use the matrix multiplication concept over it and uh, to get this final answer or you can exploit the vector definition of vector representation of it which is going to be quite easy because one vector will be, is going to be with another vector so that is going to be more straightforward and uh, same so what will happen over here in the uh, vector representation a can be written as a can be written as, can anyone tell me, summation of sigma i, summation over i, then what, is, what do you have in the ui, vi, transpose. This is going to be there. Uh, if you go back and you are going to have the definition, I am just talking about this vector representation. So vector representation is sigma i, ui, vi, transpose, and the summation will run over i. Uh, so using this, the what is the ith relationship? Ith relationship A is equal to sigma i ui vi transpose. Now in this, I have the value of A, I have the value, uh, I have the value of sigma i, I have the value of ui, uh, uh, and I'm going to have the uh, value of this. Uh, I, need, I need to find out the value of vi transpose. So now how you are going to get that? 
now you just plug in all the values and then try to do the same thing and you are going to get the final value so how so i can immediately say that vi transpose is equal to so vi transpose is nothing but 1 over sigma i a uh, sorry uh, ui transpose ui transpose uh, ui multiply vi transpose is nothing but 1 over sigma i a so now you can plug in the value of ui uh, and uh, a over here and you are going to get the final values of b if you feel that this is going to be tiresome or is going to be very uh, let's say complicated then just try to use this relation a is given to you a is 1 2 1 2 and then u is again you have identified which is going to be this particular matrix you can write down over here sigma is again you know root 10 0 0 0 and then this is going to be let's say v11 v12 v21 v22 so this is going to be so now just construct a system of equations and then try to find out the values of v11 v12 v21 and v22 to get the final solution so it is up to your uh, it is up to you which way to go and again uh, you can follow the end of the path because uh, i know that this is going to be the invertible matrix this is going to be the invertible matrix so you, the multiplication of two invertible matrix is again going to be the invertible matrix so you can quickly multiply these two and then uh, multiply by the inverse of this matrix on the both side immediately you will get your v so this way it is going to be quite easy to solve but in some cases uh, this multiplication is going to be very tedious especially when you are going to have uh, the size of your matrix very large like let's say if i'm going to give you a matrix of uh, 4 by 5 then uh, the multiplication will take some time but as long as you are going to 2 by 2 matrix then this matrix definition will work otherwise you have to follow this particular uh, value so let uh, again uh, let me uh, let me give you the final value of v i'm not going to uh, give you uh, uh, the value so or you want to try Okay, so let me do one more homework. Please give me the value of V, and then we are going to have uh, one more example going to done in the next class. I think uh, this week uh, we have time or is over? I think uh, the time is almost over, so I will stop there today, and then we will uh, continue our discussion on the single value composition in the next lecture. That's tomorrow. And then we will uh, start with the same problem and I will ask you to give me the matrix V. So I hope that you are going to uh, find out the matrix V after this simple multiplication and then taking the inverse of this particular matrix. Uh, okay, so please give me this V in the next lecture and we will discuss further. And then we will see the example of similar value decomposition in mathematics as well as uh, in form of the principal component analysis. So, uh, thank you very much and uh, now uh, I will welcome your questions or queries which you might have in today's lecture. So, any query uh, you might have? Okay, uh, anyone, uh, if you have any query, you can please uh, either uh, write in the chat box or maybe you can unmute yourself and uh, we will uh, have a discussion on that. Uh, sir, in between you have asked one question. Uh, could you repeat that question uh, related to uh, singular value decomposition A is equals to U summation V transpose? You were asking something uh, related to under root thing. So Okay, I am saying that when you find out the eigenvalues of A transpose, then the singular values are nothing but the square root of those eigenvalues of A, tra a transpose or A transpose A. So why this square root is going to be there? Okay. That, that was uh, the my, that was my question. Okay, okay, sir. So I always in the in this example only when I try to construct uh, the singular value matrix, 
I what I did okay. is I take I took the square root of the eigen values of a transpose. A. So why is this okay. uh, square root I need to take? So okay, you so, just need to understand that. Ha ha. So sir, I am working on that only. Uh, so we have a is equals to u summation v transpose. Yeah. So if we do a dot a transpose, so it will be u summation v transpose dot v yeah. summation transpose u transpose. Yeah, exactly. So it will ha. Huh, so it will boils down to u summation summation transpose u I transpose. You have given the you you have given the solution to all. Okay, then if you have given the solution, then quickly let me. Uh, let me also give, but I want uh, definitely. I'm going to want that. Uh, you are absolutely right. Whatever you said is uh, very uh, is uh, absolutely correct. So let me let me quickly give that solution to all on this particular point of slide. So that so so uh, I think one of your uh, one of your solution is going to be actually done now. So okay. So the solution of this is why it is going to be the square root is. I know that a is equal to u sigma v transpose. Okay, then, uh, then you have to what you have to do? You have to multiply with a transpose. So first, I need to identify the a transpose over here. So what is the a transpose? Is nothing but u sigma v transpose whole transpose. And I know that a v whole transpose is nothing but v transpose a transpose. So if I use this formula, what I will get? I will get v transpose transpose. That is going to be v. Then sigma transpose is going to be just sigma. And e is going to be u transpose. So now try to take the a transpose a is nothing but uh, v sigma u transpose, and then u sigma v transpose. What you will get? You will get uh, v sigma square because this is the orthogonal matrix that you are going to get i and it's going to be v transpose. So the eigen value because the eigen decomposition which we got is uh, like q q transpose so a transpose a will give you v as well as the sigma square is nothing but this so the sigma is nothing but the square root of sigma and this and this is going to be diagonal matrix so essentially uh, this will boil down to the sigma is equal to square root of lambda so this is nothing but the very simple proof of uh, uh, the thing why uh, singular value is always going to be uh, the square root of the eigenvalues of either a transpose a or a transpose. Uh, so I appreciate. Uh, by the way, who was the one who was telling me the solution? What is your name? I think Shivani. Yes, sir, Shivani Chauhan. Yeah. So I I really appreciate that you have uh, captured the motivation uh, which will lead to the singular value decomposition very in a very correct manner. Mm -hmm. so uh, sir, in your solution, uh, you have taken, uh, you have assumed that summation uh, means we should write summation, summation transpose because that summation matrix need not be a square matrix. It could be a rectangular. No, but it is matrix. going to be diagonal, rectangular diagonal matrix. So, uh -huh. if not yes. zero, is not going to create any problem. So, okay. uh, without loss of generality, uh, if I don't have a well defined well defined value of this sigma. Then I can always say that it's going to be uh, going to be the the simple as we are going to do what the diagonal matrix we can do and do it for this as well. Okay, okay, and I understand. So this is going to be a sparse matrix. Most right. of the elements are going to be zero, uh, yes, so yes, it's not yes. going to make any sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. okay. thank you, sir. Okay, no issue. So any any other uh, query? Okay, so I think uh, there, if there are no further queries, so I will stop here today. And in the next class, we will see a few applications of SVD and then uh, we will uh, lead to the ultimate goal of finding the principal component and this is how the principal component is will work. We will see in the next uh, lecture. Uh, so thank you, Varunji. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Varunji. Thank you for this lecture. So tomorrow uh, we have two lectures, one hour each. One will start at 5 p.m. and other will at 6.15 p.m. Okay, so thank sure. you. Bye. Good night. Yeah, good night everyone.